Hello and welcome to Formation, a weekly conversation for followers of Jesus. I am Kara Watts and I am with my friends Shannon Moore, Renee Ho. And we are continuing our walk and together as a congregation reading the book of Acts. And so in this series, Unstoppable. And we are in the next to the last week, which is kind of remarkable. It seems to have have moved (laughs) moved really quickly. And that makes sense because Acts is a pretty quick, fast paced action book. Yeah. Yeah. I so think people how don't realize are that, yeah. um, how exciting the book of Acts is and how much happens in it, Yes, how many people we meet. I, if, if we went back and listened to the very first, kind of our first conversation about Acts, I was like, eh, I don't really like Acts. <laughs> I would like to, <laughs> I'd like to change my answer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All I right. would like to change my answer that, that really looking at it from chapter one all the way through and really paying attention to the story and not just kind of pulling a story out and looking at it, but looking to everything that was happening. It was pretty remarkable. So this week we will be in uh, chapters 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And so we will be picking some, uh, some scripture passages from that to go along, but just to kind of give you a little bit of an update as to where we are. Um, Paul is having some moments um, and it might be a nice way to say that. And some, yeah. some folks are not very pleased with that. And so these chapters are really the beginning of where we see it's all about Paul. Um, it's all about what happens to Paul and what's going on with Paul and Paul's work. Um, because Paul is really leaning into all can kind of come and be a part of this amazing story. Um, but that is really troubling to a lot of, a lot of folks. And so we see, um, kind of, the, the diaspora of Jewish people that are now kind of coming back and not really understanding what's going on and how can this be, you know, a, a Jewish person who is also saying these things. So there's just a lot of um, misunderstanding and concern about where where we're going and where we're headed. And so we will check in um, with Paul on a, several different ways, and then it will then quickly shift into... Um, the more political trial side. Um, so that's kind of where we're headed today. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't know we were going to be talking about politics. Paul and hot water. Shocking. Politics. Politics. <laughs> so clever. <laughs> but, Shannon, will you... Austin, you're... our engineer, just shaking his head. Our, no. there, maybe there will our be a only graphic. audience is not taking... <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, but if you will start us out with um, kind of... Paul retelling um, what has happened to him along the way, what sure. he's experienced. Um, so Paul is telling what happened to him when he was converted, which we read about several right. weeks ago. And he reminds us that you know he's a Jew, um, that he is a Roman citizen, and that um, you know he persecuted the the, the Christians when. Um, the, the movement was brand new, not long after Jesus had ascended and the Holy Spirit had descended upon the believers. Um, he did not like the way, which is what the, the group was called, these followers of Jesus. He, he didn't like that. He thought they uh, were a harm to the religious community. And after the first martyr was uh, stoned, Stephen, uh, we read that he approved of that, and then he started going around and sort of gathering people up, women and men, to to take them to jail. He got permission from the high priest um, to go to Damascus and round people up who were following Jesus. And so he tells this story about being on the way to Damascus and a bright light from heaven came on him. I'm going to start reading at verse 7. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked who it is. The voice says, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you're persecuting. If you go back and read the earlier you know, story of this, it's very true to, to what happens here. But he tells him to go to Damascus, um, and it, the light caused him to be blind for several days. He told him to go to a man named Ananias, who was a devout observer of the law, but who was a follower. And so Ananias, as we read earlier, was worried about that interaction, but agreed to to meet with with Saul, who he was called at the time, um, laid hands on him. He received his sight, and um, yep. And then he his life changed. He got his sight back. He became 
as fervent a follower of Jesus as he had been a persecutor of Jesus before. Um, and then in verse 21 says, The Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. So that's kind yeah. of his story, his his testimony of how he came to be where he where he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the in in this amazing book that we received, that's right, <laughs> a commentary that we received. It talks about the fact that when Luke is writing Acts, um, the things that are really important that he wants to make sure that we get are repeated, mm-hmm. and so we will see this conversion story repeated, and particularly the parts that he really, really wants us to get. Um, mm-hmm. Paul is going to touch on those multiple times, and so those include, you know, uh, the lesson that the lessons that he knows well, that he wants us to know well. And so that Paul is kind of this resurrection story as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he sees the resurrection story, that that part of Jesus' life, life is important. Um, he has this temple vision that really kind of upsets some of the, the Jewish leaders because he's in the temple praying when he sees this vision of, of Jesus, but that that's still, again, Luke's move to kind of bring us all into mm-hmm. one group um, to kind of help unify, um, but it's it's a unique story. Well, and I, I think back to what Renee shared with us several weeks ago when you talked about the importance of eyewitness testimony, how important it was for those uh, disciples, now apostles, mm-hmm. who had been with Jesus in his life to see him risen, to see him ascend, and Paul wasn't in that Paul group. Didn't get to be and so that. now he's heard from Jesus. He has seen the risen mm-hmm. Christ in a vision, and that gives him sort of a, dif- a different type of eyewitness credibility Not than the, the than the apostles had. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's an interesting story. And I love at the beginning when he starts out saying, Look, I persecuted you. I'm the one that was I was the one that was hurting you. <laughs> um, I am a Jewish person. I, you know, I went way out of my way to hurt you. So in in any conversion story, yeah. the worse you were before, the more power in the story, <laughs> right. right? We right. all grew up in a tradition where if you wanted to make uh, your living at speaking for revivals as a preacher, you had to have, kind of have to be on Bourbon Street laying in the gutter. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the light comes <laughs> right. and you stand up. And so Paul is, I mean, this is, this yeah. is a powerful conversion yeah. story. Well, and to make a, a connection with your audience, I mean, he's talking to people who are zealous for the law, yes. zealous for God, and he said, "I'm, I look, I've I, been there. Yes, I was you, I was you. Uh-huh. and um, and that is that is establishing a link that causes the listeners to hear in a different way. Don't otherwise, you think? it's just somebody pointing their finger at you with yeah. with no context. Yeah. He's like, but he provides the. Look, I know exactly where you're coming from because right. I've been there. Yeah, I used to do that full time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what does that look like today? How do we how do we imagine that? I mean, you talked about the you have to be laying in the gutter, you know, to have this amazing story. I, I still think the most powerful um, stories that I hear from people today are adults who have come to faith as adults, mm-hmm. and ad- and adults who grew up in the church but realized in their early 20s or their mid-30s they actually hadn't had that change of heart mm-hmm. that the Bible talks about. Right. You know, those are, those right. are powerful. Uh, right. If you grew up in the church and you've always felt like this is my community, you, you don't have that same story to tell. Right. And, right. B- and g- which growing up in the church is also a great, life i mean a, yes, a great right. way Absolutely. to, to right. have been but to not have had that 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 moment that that right. transforming moment that that Paul where had. everything changed everything changed because yeah. of xyz yeah yeah but, yeah i think it's an important thing for us to, there's, to think there's about there's power now i we were kind of saying before we began paul sure does tell that story a lot <laughs> right. but there's power in that right. story right. and i uh, he Every time he was in hot water, every time he had stand before officials, you know, if he had to be in in a Gentile community, he just got really good at telling that right. story because it was it was him connecting right. with whoever he was talking 
right. with. Yeah, and, and we see that in the rest of that chapter, it works so well that he gets some people really hyped up, and so they, uh, the authorities take him into custody um, at, for his own protection, mm -hmm. um, as, as it says. Um, but that, that speech has really kind of upset some folks. Mm -hmm. And so if we look um, to chapter 23, Renee, if you'll read verses 11 through 24, we see that uh, Paul really kind of has some issues <laughs> to deal so, with. So he is, the officials were afraid people who were really angry were going to tear Paul to pieces, as it says yes. in verse 10. And so they took him to the barracks. I think that's kind of a... He wasn't in jail, <laughs> right? <laughs> but that was where he could be protected. Right. Okay, so I'm going to, 23, I'll, I'll read beginning with verse 11. That night the Lord stood near him and said, Keep up your courage, for just as if you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must bear witness also in Rome. In the morning the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they killed Paul. There were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we've killed Paul. Now then, you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case. And we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush. So he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took, uh, took him by the hand, drew him aside privately and said, What is it that you want to report to me? And he answered, the Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly into his case, but do not be persuaded by them, for more than 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they kill him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him tell no one, that you have informed me of this. And then he summoned two of the centurions and said, get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and take him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter to this effect. Yeah. That was serious. That was serious, serious. It would take a lot for me to take a vow not to eat. <laughs> <laughs> for how many, for a lot, of, potentially a lot of days. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, they had just had enough of they him. They had had enough. Yeah. But doesn't that kind of align him a little bit with Jesus? Yeah. These stories? Yeah. These yeah. stories where well, he's in jeopardy? Yeah, and we didn't talk about this, but at the end of the, the previous chapter, they take him, you know, to protect him for his own good. And they're going to, they're going to just punish him essentially. But what Paul says is, wait, I haven't, I am a Roman citizen. I haven't had a trial yet. And so that kind of totally shifts and changes this entire story because now he's a protected member of this community that many of the people that he is preaching and, you know, working with are not necessarily, um, a don't have part that privilege. They don't yeah. have that privilege. So we suddenly see the shift and Paul has a lot of power in that because he happens to be a Roman citizen Which and can stop big, everything. A really big, big deal. deal. And that is what protects him and has all of these Roman guards and leaders saying, well, we can't let these people just kill him because he's a Roman citizen. Um, and yet you have, and maybe they should have thought about that before they decided not to eat. <laughs> 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 Maybe they Paul be should have brought it up earlier. Maybe so. I, I wonder why that didn't happen. He was, he was saving it in case he really needed it as yeah. his last resort. <laughs> but it definitely shifts everything and, mm -hmm. and changes because mm -hmm. now what we'll see from this point on in the book of Acts, it's all about it's all about Paul <laughs> from here on out. Mm -hmm. But it's particularly about Paul as being a part of this political political. Oh, political. Uh -huh. uh, thank you for that. Uh, 
but part of that story. And so it really shifts that it's not just, (laughs) not just this religious aspect anymore, but now we're seeing how these two things can cross over and cause all sorts of drama. Who would have thought, right? (laughs) Drama in the church? (laughs) Drama in the church. But yeah, he was, what's happening is serious. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, yes. it is serious, and he is in he is in danger, and yet he is being protected. And the, and the story is really told almost like it's a documentary. Uh-huh. I mean, it's really yeah. compelling the way it's laid yeah. out, and it the twists and turns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's that, really good. And the nephew, like I just I love the, the part where the save the day. Yeah, yeah, who's like, hey, I've I've heard some things, Uncle Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some things. Perhaps, perhaps you should be careful. Saves the day. Yes. So, so we go from that, and uh, we we move on. And Rev. Moore, if you will read in chapter twenty-four, and we'll pick back up um, with with what is going on next with Paul's testimony. Sorry, do you want me to read that? You can. It does uh, whatever you like. What verse? Uh, well, I'll read it. Okay. (laughs) Twenty-four. Uh, chapters 10 through 21. Uh, yeah, I, too long to <laughs> I, know, I knew the answer. <laughs> Here we go. When the governor motioned to him to speak, Paul replied, I cheerfully make my defense, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation. As you can find out, it is not more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not find me disputing with anyone in the temple or storing up a crowd, either in the synagogues or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you the charge that they now bring against me. But this I admit to you, that according to the way, which they call a sect, I worship the God of our ancestors." believing everything laid down according to the law or written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. Therefore, I do my best always to have a clear conscience toward God and all people. Now, after some years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offer sacrifices. While I was doing this, they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia. They ought to be here before you to make an accusation if they have anything against me. Or let these men here tell what crime they have had found when I stood before the council. Unless it was this one sentence that I call out while standing before them. It is about the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. But Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the hearing with the comment, When Lysias, the tribune, comes down, I will decide your case. Then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. Some days later, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him speak concerning faith in Christ Jesus. So we have Paul saying, how on earth are you trying me here? Mm-hmm. I have done. How did we get to this? Point? How did we get to this point? And later we see that, in fact, um, Felix says, "You have done nothing wrong," mm-hmm. um, which is also right. like a Jesus, Jesus right? connection. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yep. Yep. The official says, yeah. "I see nothing. I see nothing wrong here." And I like Paul demanding, "Let my accusers be here and let right. them explain mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. to you. Otherwise, this is not really right." A, so he's speaking up for himself. Yeah. He's very eloquent. He is very eloquent. Um, and, and just the ability to say, here's where I have hope. You know, I, mm-hmm. I think. I like that. I, I have, yeah. I, was, I have a hope in God. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, you know, ceremonially, ceremonially clean. I didn't right. do anything wrong. I worship the same God. <laughs> I have always have. Right. It's just they don't like that I talk about this resurrection, this sect mm-hmm. that they that they call, um, yeah. as they call it. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad that I wasn't named Drusilla. <laughs> <laughs> That's not I'm, a good... I'm a little sad that you so, weren't named. <laughs> there's some good biblical names for women, but not Here Drusilla. Here are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Drusilla. <laughs> Drusilla. Oh, my gosh. No offense to any of you who may be, who named, may be Drusilla. named Drusilla. Sorry. That would be a wonderful, wonderful name as well. But yeah, but we just continue to see Paul stand up for himself when he's speaking mm-hmm. with he seems with crowds to be at his best yes. when the heat is turned up. Don't you think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he really he he evaluates the situation, he speaks. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that to, speaks to his faith yes, and right. the power of the Holy Spirit that has filled him um since his his um transformation since yeah. his uh, what's the word I'm looking for? His conversion. Conversion, yeah. yeah. 
that um, he doesn't do anything he doesn't fear. halfway. Yeah. Yeah, and we see in verse or in chapter twenty five, verses eighteen through twenty one, just to close out this section, when the accuser stood up, this is when the trial kind of continues on later, they did not charge him with any of the crimes that I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and be tried on these charges. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to the emperor. So this is a story of... They keep pushing it down. They keep pushing it down the road. Down the road. And eventually he ends up... At the Supreme Court. At the, <laughs> he basically ends up all the way back. But I just find it fascinating how, how, the, how the judicial system of Rome at the time... Um, was ends very up progressive, right? Yeah, and ends up be. I mean, no one said, okay, "Forget it, we've had enough." I mean, he ends up being in prison for two years, but having an, an amazing amount of uh, freedom. Freedom, yeah. And as the, a prisoner of Rome, yeah, they wanted to make sure that he was cared for, mm -hmm. and and that the the charges about what he was actually doing are not really charges. Mm -hmm. To me, that's just an amazing he, part of the I story. Think he knew the legal system well. Yes, he, he knew must how have. To where are the advantages mm -hmm. and and to ask for to be kept in custody until mm -hmm. a decision was made? He knew, yeah, sure, yeah. And if we he look the system. all the way back, he was getting information and and permission from leaders and rulers early on when he was being unkind to the to the new Christians. And so, yeah, he certainly knew his way around this thing. So again, just looking at the fast pace world and life of Paul. Um, we have one more week. I wonder all, what will happen next. All, <laughs> we'll Whoa. all come, come to a close. Um, but thank you. If you have questions or comments, we'd love uh, to hear from you at formation at uccftw.com. So let us know uh, what you think about this fast-paced story and about Paul and all that he's doing. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.